What's an escape patroller's pack? Well, it could be anything and everything. All sorts of weird stuff. Um, so much goes into what somebody would carry, uh, but there's some things that um, you have to take in consideration. What's the mission profile of the ski patrol? Because even ski patrols have subtly different mission profiles, like trail maintenance, trauma and medical care, very high angle cliff bands and places where like there's that kind of hazard. Uh, so maybe some sort of rope rescue equipment, avalanches. And then what is your resort mandate that you carry? There's that, and like the things that you have to carry. Um, what are you willing to carry? For most people, I think uh, weight is a huge issue because you're gonna be carrying this stuff all day for 10 hours a day. Um, so you wanna be as light as possible. Like what additional training background do you have where you can be an enabler? And if you feel like you can carry something that would be a huge benefit to everyone else, then maybe you could carry that too. Some people carry fanny packs. Some people carry uh, stuff in a vest. I like to carry a backpack. I'm just gonna gut this pack out. Okay. I blow my nose a lot, I carry handkerchiefs with me. Um, I want a multi-tool, the Leatherman Wave is great because I can do a lot of things with that. I carry uh, Coban, not for medical purposes. I found that this is actually really good uh, when I want to tape up uh, an explosive shot and air blast it on a stick in the snow. Uh, I used to carry electrical tape, but I found that certain electrical tape uh, got very brittle under really cold temperatures and like it kept breaking off and wouldn't hold, but this is like, Really cool. I like using that lately. Uh, okay, um, I'm gonna come back to this. <laughs> uh, a scraper is always a handy tool to scrape off the bottom of toboggans. Uh, ski straps, you can lash anything together with those. And a spare set of batteries for my avalanche beacon transceiver. Um, let's see. And I'm gonna come back to these two. Uh, rope rescue, I'm gonna save for a little later. All right, random stuff, uh, gauze, paperwork. Uh, patient care, uh, one rigid SAM splint. So, SAM splint. Writing utensils, dry erase marker, a couple permanent markers, pencils, and a pen. Well, now we're kind of getting into the weeds. Um, a lot of people don't carry a stethoscope. I carry a stethoscope because I know how to use it. Um, I can infer a lot with this as far as diagnosis goes. This one's the ADC, um, kind of similar to the Lippmann uh, cardiology. Adscope 600 series, so a cardiology, uh, really nice to have. On that note, diagnostics. I carry diagnostics because I can infer a lot. I carry a glucometer with blood sugar to, to get people's blood sugar because if they are altered, I need to know why. Sometimes it's not trauma. So um, yeah, and I carry a, a BP cuff in there as well. You should have some sort of med kit. I see a lot of people carrying uh, random stuff in plastic, like Ziploc baggies, but those things break and they deteriorate and they leak and all your stuff gets wet in the elements over time. Uh, I found that some kind of ballistic nylon kit works really well. Um, based on the profile and the, the, the size, like I wanted something like so that it would fit in my pack pretty well. I think this is Voodoo Tactical. Maybe. Um, what do you carry in your med pack? You should not just grab a med pack, like adventure medical kits or something, just off a rack and just say, oh, that's good, that's in my med pack. Be a critical thinker and match what you're likely to use in the elements out there. So, most of the stuff we do is trauma, so I'm gonna be carrying some big bandages, uh, pressure dressings, a tourniquet, because we've used those on more than one occasion. Um, and some other goodies in here that uh, I kind of don't want to delve into too much. Uh, but again, like if you have the training, and the capability and the motivation to carry extra and you can be an enabler, then feel free to do that. So long as you get clearance from your medical director at your resort. Um, and so mine, just at a quick glance, that's kind of what it looks like. So uh, I won't get into too much depth on that. Um, as far as bandaging and those, uh, the gauze rolls, the thicker the better. Most of them come in four inch. I want, I want six inches because I want them to be really thick. Unfortunately, when you buy the six inch ones, they aren't very long. So I double them up. I buy two and then I mirror them together with the hook and loop fastener and the Velcro. And I create this really long bandage that's six inches wide. So it works really well. So medical. Um, I also carry a folding saw. Good for Maintenance, uh, clearing stuff if I'm gonna rig like rope systems onto trees or uh, cutting through twigs and sticks that may be uh, located inside avalanche debris. Okay, I carry a smoke flare 
So smoke, not signal. Um, at our resort, most of our LZs are already known, and so we call it an LZ that they kind of the helicopter kind of knows where to go, and then we once we're in sight, we pop the smoke, uh, and it gives them a pinpoint location as well as wind direction. Okay, and you'd be surprised, like, because trying to find this stuff like in a pinch, like. It comes in handy if you already have it. So wherever you are in the mountain, like you can be an enabler and be like, hey, I'm at XYZ location, I can get to here really fast, and I have everything I need to coordinate for an LZ. Uh, Avalanche is pretty standard. You want a beacon, shovel, and a probe. And 300 centimeter probe at a minimum, probably, this one is 300. So BCA probe. Uh, I like D-handle uh, shovels, but the D-handle doesn't fit my pack very well, so this is a T-handle. My backcountry pack has a D-handle, so that's for avalanche response. And let's get into the rope rescue part of it. So there are two uh, kind of environments that Ski Patrol is working in when it comes to rope rescue. It's the, it's the outdoor elements, uh, the natural environment, the cliff environment, and then the, uh, the structural environment, so lift towers. And that's important because there's a delineator on, on as far as like regulations, standards, what you have to do, how you have to protect yourself, what you have to wear, appropriate gear, et cetera. So um, my ski pants, the belt that I, it's not here, but the belt that I have is basically a harness ready to go, um, a seat harness ready to go. I just have to clip in my leg loops on cobra buckles. So I think this was the Yates Special Forces yeah, Yates Special Forces Harness, um, and I just whip the leg loops out and then clip into them, which is great because I don't have to, uh, I can do this in really cold weather with gloves on, uh, as opposed to some of those other recreational alpine harnesses where you still have to like take the belay loop and, and thread it and then back clip on the buckle. This is all cover, cover buckles. Uh, I just hook up and I'm done. Um, I also have a chest uh, component to it, and this is for tower rescues or any kind of work I have to do on lift towers. Because uh, if like a real emergency happens, like you only have so many full body harnesses available for people. Um, and if I can be completely self-sufficient and just integrate my seat harness that I'm already wearing into a full body harness with a rated sternal arrest point, I'm good to go. It doesn't matter where I am on the mountain. I can, I can be ready and dressed and ready to go and help out for any kind of lift tower problems. This is an Aztec bag, but it's an Aztec minus, or set of fours minus. So, <clears throat> I don't have a pre-built mechanical advantage system in here, but I do have 50 feet of eight mil cord. Uh, on one end, I terminally tie off with a snap hook. And then on the other end, it's your classic fall restraint lanyard with the Mad Rock safeguard. So, with another snap hook terminally. So I can do a lot with this. Um, in conjunction with one of these. So the progress adjust. So between these two components, I can climb trees and alternate as I climb, that will protect me, and I can do maintenance for like, a, we call them trolleys or trams, some of us call them trams, where we slide explosives down a slope on a line and we air blast. And sometimes we do maintenance on that, so you want to be able to climb trees, and so this, I can alternate and protect me. Um, I can also use, uh, this and let's find an anchor. If I wanted to maybe descend down a slope or insert myself for training purposes, like if we're doing some sort of cliff rescue training, I can be completely independent, self-sufficient. So if this is a tree, um, I can just extend my safeguard out and wrap around the tree. And then descend down and I have 50 feet or maybe 45 feet to go down and place myself. I can also use this to retrieve gear or do whatever I want to on a line. Granted, you're on a single line, but OSHA and ASSP and like, we're out in the natural environment. So those regulations don't apply. I just use good judgment. I'm comfortable doing this. Eight mil is the smallest diameter uh, of cordage that I would probably recommend or be comfortable uh, sus suspending yourself on. Granted, you could, you could, yeah, you could suspend yourself on six mil. The only problem with six mil is that how do you control a descent on six mil? Because it's so thin, there are no devices like that you can really uh, control because there's such little friction. If I wanted to lower somebody else down and insert them into a position, again, for like a training environment, um, what I can do is, is put this at the anchor instead. And 
So if I had somebody else, and if I was like, okay, well, I'll be your victim for this exercise, uh, why don't you lower me down because I don't know how to do this. And say, like, okay, yeah, I can do that. Um, now I can basically treat this as a, instead of a descender, as a descent control device at the anchor. Um, and I can take the back end, that's why I have this on the back end, do the same thing. Just a fast butterfly. And I'm gonna wrap this around and get this taut. And now I clip my device, my descent control device, not descender this time, at the anchor. And me as an operator can lower somebody else out. So uh, a lot of different things you can do with just this pack. Um, so pretty versatile. One additional part, I wouldn't call it a part of my pack, uh, but a part of my kit that I'm always wearing in the mountains is uh, the radio chest harness. And so on that also things like a whistle, a pen light, I carry a pulse oximeter, uh, trauma shears, a couple of like little flip chart cheat sheets for like um, basically like avalanche uh, rescue management, ICS incident management, um, and a couple other little things. Okay so going back to like mission profile, at our resort we have the potential and it's highly likely every season it happens uh, to be called out on a backcountry rescue or response, whether that's an avalanche incident or uh, some sort of injury or problem. For me, I have a separate bag altogether that lives in my locker room uh, because what I'm doing in a resort um, and how I pack, like it, it doesn't translate very well to a backcountry response. And I don't want to spend a lot of time swapping gear out when, I, when we get a call out. I want to be ready to go right now. Um, and so I ditch my pack all together and then I grab my backcountry pack. I have a, uh, this is for our patient, so for warmth and comfort. The NRS straps uh, are just here, but they're for additional lashing. If I want to bring additional team kits or gear, additional medical stuff, if we know uh, some sort of specifics, um, I can bring that. I can, I can lash more things to my pack with the NRS straps. Um, okay, my skins are on the outside. Um, my skins aren't already on my skis. Um, you know, some people have their skins already rigged up on their skis. I don't, because um, sometimes we do a trailhead and then we go down first across the drainage and then go up. That happens quite often. Um, so the skins are here, they're ready to go. I have three non-locking carabiners. One, two, three, and they're ovals because for the unforeseen, I can do a lot of things with oval non-locking carabiners uh, for safe improvisation. And two of the uh, six mil Sterling Aztec uh, trussics. Uh, because our transport devices that we carry, they're rigged up in a certain way. So we have skeds and we have uh, the carbon fiber toboggans. Um, and so we, chances are like, if we're using that, we don't need a whole lot else. Not to say that we never need a whole lot else, but if we do need more things, we have to call for those resources like big ropes, more gear. Um, but at a minimum, I can do a lot with three carabiners and the Presix, in addition to the transport uh, accessory items that come with the skeds and those carbon fiber toboggans. All right, moving on. I can fit a D-handle shovel in my backcountry kit, no problem. This time, instead of just smoke, I have uh, not smoke and smoke. I have two. This one is signal. This one is smoke. So for visibility, trying to like pinpoint where exactly we are for the helicopter, that's signal. Once we've got it, we can pop the smoke, give them a better idea of wind, direction, speed, etc. Um, of course, the probes, same type of probe. I also want a folding saw. Okay. Uh, this time, we're going with a headlamp extra batteries for my headlamp. Kim lights. Extra batteries for a transceiver. Um, medical gear, um, not as uh, robust as the one I carry inbounds, uh, but it has more bulky dressings. Um, so the one I carry inbounds has a lot more diagnostic stuff, a lot more ALS interface type things. Uh, this is just bulky dressings, um, which is really, in reality, that's all you're gonna really be able to do out there. Um, so, 
Also a scraper of some type. Have to do like a wax treatment on your skin. You can scrape off the excess, but also scraping snow off of your skins too. Um, big, giant biohazard bag. And then uh, just a random sling for a utility. Ski strap. And on the side, more ski straps because they come in handy quite a bit. Some general flagging. I want to flag uh, markers, so avalanche or LZs, I can do that. Um, okay, top compartment. <coughs> so when I get a call out, one thing I do is I ditch my helmet. Like I don't want to have that helmet with me. So I ditch the helmet, I throw on a beanie, and I have separate goggles for that. So everything in my head comes off, I grab this, it has what I need here. Because a lot of times if we're skinning, we're going to sweat. Sometimes I, like, I don't want to have that helmet with me um, for lightweight purposes. Um, tourniquets are great. So Extra pair of gloves is important. Chances are a patient is going to be beyond cold, so I carry four instant hot packs and another coat for myself because when I get the call out, I ditch the helmet and I ditch my shell completely because I'm anticipating the, the possibility of skinning or exerting myself and I don't want to sweat too much and become like a, like a sauna. So if I need to put the coat on later, it's already in my pack. Um, when I first respond, take the helmet off, take my coat off, and just go out the door. And then I have the beanie goggles and an extra coat if I need it, with extra gloves, because I can get sweaty, or if I'm digging out snow, my, the gloves are going to get soaked. And if it's a 24-hour ordeal, like uh, hydration and food for me and or patient. And then an emergency bivy. Also carry a map of our general area as well as a compass with an inclinometer uh, built into it. Okay, um, yeah, what's in a ski patroller's pack? It just depends. What, what do you foresee yourself doing? Um, and then just building it out so that you can be as prepared and organized and streamlined as possible. Weight is always an issue. Uh, some people give me uh, a hard time for the amount of weight I carry on a day-to-day -day basis, but um, I don't know. In my head, I justify it. Most everything that's in my kit, I've, it's in there for a reason. So um, you spend years, decades refining this, and it never ends. You're always kind of tweaking what you carry out there. So there you have it.